This is David Pope. I'm here today to offer some advice about approaching the altissimo register, specifically on the alto saxophone. The first thing to keep in mind when approaching altissimo is that the reed is vibrating in a different way than from when you're playing low notes. Low notes are vibrating slowly and with long wavelengths. So the embouchure needs to mainly cushion the reed and provide um, some support. When we're playing high notes, the reed is vibrating very quickly with very short wavelengths. For that reason, it's important to take a little bit more mouthpiece. Now the problem with doing this is that you can't be moving the mouthpiece in and out of your mouth to try and go back and forth, especially if you've got to play leaps that are back and forth. Um, so the answer to this is to develop strong embouchure muscles so that as you play up into the altissimo register, your lip can become firm and slightly reach forward towards the heart of the reed. By doing that, you won't have to move around. You can put yourself in one spot. So it's particularly important if you're going to be playing a passage that has altissimo that your mouthpiece is in a good spot where you can get your lip forward enough to support those high notes. If you're too far out, it becomes more difficult to provide the necessary amount of support. It's also very important that you choose a reed that has enough fibers and strength in the tip uh, that you can play up into the extreme high register. You can be playing a reed that is marked a three and a half or even a four, but if it's particularly soft and pulpy out towards the tip, it's not going to play very well in the extreme upper register. Um, so the, the answer is not to choose reeds that are harder, but to choose reeds that have a proper balance so that they'll do everything that you need them to do. Mainly I play Van Doren number three blue boxes, and I actually choose the softest ones possible so that I can play in the low register and with a lot of color and flexibility. But I also look for reeds that have got some strength in the tip so that they play well in the upper register. Proper performance in the altissimo register requires a strong sense of voicing. By voicing, I mean using the oral cavity and the arch of the tongue. One way to uh, experience this is to just practice whistling and think about what your tongue does as you're ascending in pitch. You should feel your tongue going up and down and the shape of your oral cavity changing to properly voice for each one of those notes. Um, to demonstrate the importance of voicing, I'm going to play a little altissimo passage here and I'm going to randomly play the notes of the chromatic scale to show that the fingerings uh, are nowhere near as important as the voicing. Here's an exercise that you can work on that will progressively help you to get more comfortable playing the high G. To begin, finger high F with the front F fingering, which is with the octave key and the top two fingers using the teardrop key here, the, the front F key. And you'll play a high F. Then, to that fingering, add the side B flat key that's going to give you a high F sharp. Then keep those fingers down and add the index finger of your right hand. That's going to give you a slightly sharp high F sharp. And then finally, lift the middle finger of the left hand, and that should give you a high G. So what I'll do now is I'll demonstrate the uh, that progression of fingerings so that you can see it and you can hear what it sounds like.
Remember, the goal is to do this without biting, with a firm embouchure that's slightly forward on the reed to allow the reed to properly vibrate, high tongue position, as if you were whistling a high note. Uh, think the word he. I'll play the exercise one more time, and this time I'll focus on my embouchure so you can see what I'm doing. Another way to be sure that you're doing this without biting is to try playing with your top teeth slightly off of the mouthpiece. So you're using sort of a double lip embouchure. Obviously, I don't play that way, but I practice that way sometimes to make sure that I'm not biting. I'll do the exercise again, and this time I'll do it without my top teeth touching the top of the mouthpiece. So the, the mouthpiece is floating in my mouth. You can hear how free that is because the reed is not being constricted. It's being supported, but not crushed. I hope that you found this to be helpful, and I look forward to producing more videos, and I appreciate your comments.